Hey everybody, it's BJ and Patrick with you again, and we're here to talk about all things real estate. Hey, and this time, every month we're gonna be doing a market update and we're gonna dive into all the details without boring you. All right, everybody, so here we go in a market that we haven't seen in the greater Victoria area for probably at least five six seven years would you say something like yep, that five years since yeah. uh 2016 2017 where it started to heat up yeah yeah so you know so we're going to talk about what what really does this mean when we talk about a balanced market what does it mean in relation to the numbers that we're seeing for the month of august and also uh if you are a buyer how does this affect you if you're a seller how does this affect you i think one thing that's important for us to understand um, there's something I call it seller's hangover, which is kind of like sellers are they're like, wait a minute, uh, you know, four or five months ago, my neighbor sold their place for, you know, 100,000 over asking, what's going on? Well, for what most important, the market isn't there anymore. That's not what's happening. But on the flip side, you have buyers saying, well, if the market has shifted, I should be able to, you know, be 100,000 under the asking price. Well, it's not that either. So uh, I think we're going to get to some of that and talk about some of that. And I think it's important to understand both as buyers and sellers, um, when you engage a real estate professional, they're going to give you um, real facts and figures and numbers about what your home is valued at or what your price point should be based on what the market is doing. And so that's what we're going to talk about is what does that relate to you? How do you address it? And what do you do with it? Yeah, well, um, with the numbers, you can analyze uh, exactly each portion of the market. Now, the Victoria Real Estate Board is reporting uh, basically a slowdown in the market. They're comparing from last year's sales to this year's sales. But really, it's, it's such a broad stroke of the brush. You can apply that to every single aspect of what, what real estate is out there. If you sure. were looking for a one bedroom condo in this price range, well, actually it might be quite busy. Or if it's a single family home that's over a certain price range, right. well, it might actually be uh, really uh, advantageous to buyers. Right, or a certain so, location too, right? You can be certain neighborhoods. And, and even now, like I can only go, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail, but I am not gonna go into uh, exact information, but if it's, Sandwich and souk, but I want to at least give you an idea of like what areas are right. are moving a little bit quicker sure. So Victoria real estate board is basically reporting a balanced market with five months of inventory So I'm gonna use some of the way they speak to the goal is that we want to communicate the facts and translate those facts into usable information for everybody that's out there in, in terms that we understand and what does that mean for me? And you know, I want to buy a one bedroom condo. What does that mean for me? Or I want to sell my one bedroom condo in Oak Bay. What does that mean for me? I think that's more what you're talking about is translating the facts into real life situations. That's exactly it. So I'm going to start still at a broad level, but I'm going to break it down at least into the areas of Victoria. <clears throat> so between the core municipalities the peninsula and the west shore if you want to ask details about exactly which municipalities are included reach out to us and ask us um so so i'm going to group these two two together right now the core municipalities and the peninsula has an absorption rate about 17 percent so tell me what does that mean what does an absorption rate mean if I'm so watching this? so if there's uh 100 listings out there let's say they're all the same and i have an absorption rate of 17 percent right. so 17 of those sold last month right so okay. basically now i'm going to convert it back to how the real estate board likes to speak of it we have almost five months of inventory if we didn't have any new inventory added we'd run out in five, less than five months right because we're selling 17 Percent. every month that's right out of those out of those hundred that's right okay okay so the western communities so that's going to include langford Collwood, matros and highlands souk uh their absorption rate is at 15 percent so you can tell right away the core in the peninsula is a little bit more active than the western communities okay but that still doesn't paint the whole picture 
So, you know, well, what are, which municipalities are doing better in what categories, if it's condos, townhouses, or single family homes? And again, which price range? And do they have a, if it's a house, do they have a suite or no suite? I'm not going to go into all of that, but I want to give everybody an idea in which price range of single family homes are moving better than others. Okay. So single, looking at all the municipalities, if you have a house for sale that's a million dollars and under, and for buyers, this is where you're gonna to have to be a little bit more aggressive still uh, in getting the right home, where uh, houses under a million dollars are about 28% absorption rate. Wow. Right, so every one in three houses that were listed last month, or were on the market last month, sold. Right, right. So that's, that's still, like, it's moving toward the balanced market, sure. but it's still on the side of uh, sellers. Sure. Now, if you're between a million and a million and a quarter, what do I have here? It's 18%. So basically it's a little less than one in four houses are selling. Right. Now, once you're over a million and a quarter, it starts to reduce down to 10%. Ten, a 10% 10 absorption rate for houses that are over a million and a quarter. Now I grouped just like the rest of the price range. Sure. And really it drops off uh, drastically starts to drop off after two million but the last time we had an absorption rate in our market of 10 percent was like 2009 and 2010 we'd had 5,000 listings we were selling 500 450 listings every month so it's a real buyer's market the higher the price range you go up in a uh, single-family homes. okay yeah so if you're looking for a deal over two million dollars the absorption rate right now for August, that doesn't mean there were still 65 sales uh, year to date that were over $2 million. Now, it was a hot market, like you were saying sure. earlier in the year, um, but now it's really dropped off. Right. Where it's like less than 1% absorption rate. Sure. So just counting uh, the sales, we have like 33 months of inventory for homes over $2 million. Not the higher end homes. That's right. not to say that, you know, we might see 10 sales next month. Sure. Right. But it's definitely if you are looking or shopping uh, to get a better deal or more flexibility on a price, the higher the price you go, the more flexibility there should be. True. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a lot of kind of information that we just synopsized super quick. The point of which is really, um, you know, there's more to it than just the numbers. You have to you have to be able to translate those numbers into what's relevant for you, relevant for what you're looking for. Uh, whether it's you know maybe it's a one bedroom condo, maybe it's a three bedroom townhouse, maybe it's maybe it's a three million dollar home. Please call me, uh, I'll help you. Um, but you know I'm kidding. But I, no, I'm not. I would help you. But the the whole idea is the market isn't just you know, painted with one broad brush. There's different parts of the market, different things happening in the market. You know, last week I was in uh, a multiple offer situation with a buyer. When was the last time we had that where, you know, but we didn't have to go 100,000 over asking in that multiple offer situation. Uh, we got to have conditions. And these are all things that are indicative of what the market shift has been and how it's changed. So uh, I think it's important for us to talk about like what Patrick has been saying about how these numbers translate into real life uh, expectation, real life. What does that mean for you? Um, if you're, uh, you know, I, I talk to some people and they're saying, you know, what about the, the price and pressure on the price with interest rates and things like that? Uh, I think, you know, we've talked about this before, but just to reiterate, you know, the best time to buy is when you need to buy and find how you can make it fit with what's going on in the market for what you need. And, you know, Patrick's talked about this also about how the Victoria market typically shows uh, some kind of adjustment. What would you say between like 18 months, six, 12 to 18 months after, after, you know, if there's a significant downturn, it's Usually it, that about it that? lasts right about 18 months. 18 months? Yeah, every time. Yeah. So, uh, you know, obviously we're not talking about speculation. We're talking about you buying a home to live in it. So, um, you know what? These are some ideas as far as how the numbers apply and how you can apply them to yourself. And, uh, you know, we're going to do the, the, the kind of the market update. We're going to do that monthly just to give you our input and feedback on what's happening and what we think is happening in the market and how that relates to you. 
Um, but otherwise, we're going to continue on with all the other uh, stuff that we've been talking about. And so thank you for watching. We appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Uh, if you haven't, please uh, subscribe and please like our video and help us get the word out so that we can uh, just, you know, help educate people about what's going on in the world of real estate. Until next time. Until next time. Thank you so much.